Hey guys, Jimmy Song here off chain. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit today about payment channels and how they work. Um, it's kind of a, an important part of learning about lightning and this is supposed to be sort of like an educational series. So hopefully I can describe to you what a payment channel is and go from there. I'm going to start by um, sharing the screen here. This is the Bitcoin Wiki page. Um, and it has a page on payment channels. And, uh, you know, it's uh, styled exactly like a wiki. There are many types of payment channels. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it's important to sort of learn a little bit more about these things. Let me um, make the screen a little bigger so you guys can uh, see what's going on. Except it's, yeah, there. Uh, hopefully you guys can read that a little better. Anyway, uh, a payment channel is basically um, a way to uh, you know, sort of net out a bunch of transactions. So if uh, if A and B are transacting, and A gives A, a gives B ten dollars, and B gives A five dollars back, um, you can just have a net of five dollars, right? You you might be doing this with your friends whenever, if you guys like uh, you know owe each other money or whatever. There's just sort of like a capturing of the ledger or something, and you you just keep tabs, and then you settle at the end. That's kind of what payment channels are. Um, and it's it's a technique uh, that that was uh, you know utilized uh, or that that's utilized. Um, I, I, you can do this on uh, on the Bitcoin network today. It's just not used that much. Um, but yeah, uh, you don't you don't have to commit all of those uh, in between transactions from A to B, B back to A, A back to B, or whatever um, in a normal payment channel. Um, uh, you you just uh, put the one final one on the chain, and that's sort of the Lightning Network. You need lots of payment channels in order to make the Lightning Network work. If you have a payment channel between A and B, and a payment channel between B and C, that's essentially like a, a network of payment channels, and you, you A can pay C via B, and that's that's the idea behind the Lightning Network. Um, but yeah, the the sort of like the atomic thing in a Lightning Network is a payment channel, and this is what I'm going to talk about. All right, so th this article is actually pretty good, and it, it talks a lot about um, sort of the evolution of payment channels. So the first one is uh, is is what uh, Satoshi Nakamoto coded uh, in 0 0.1. This is uh, this utilizes something called transaction replacement using sequence numbers and n lock time. Um, and you know, he, uh, Satoshi Nakamoto actually uh, described the technique to a Bitcoin developer. Um, I can read it here, but basically, um, you have some sort of open transaction back and forth, but don't actually publish it to the blockchain until uh, the right time. The only thing was that this design was not secure. Uh, if one of the parties, um, minor, uh, and commit sort of like a mid-state transaction, then you can sort of steal funds from the other guy. So if A and B are transacting, and A gives B you know five bitcoins, and B gives back to A three three bitcoin, um, A can take this uh, or B could take the state before he paid A, and get that collude with a miner to get that transaction published. It would be out three bitcoins. So um, this this is one of the reasons why the you know like n sequence and n lock time actually exist, uh, but you know they they you know it didn't work out because of this uh, obvious flaw here. The second type of uh, payment channel that came uh, through is something called the Spillman style payment channels. is um, implemented in Bitcoin J, um, but basically. Uh, you one transaction uh, is it creates a secured deposit, and a second transaction releases the deposited funds to in the manner agreed to by both parties. So basically, there's some sort of funding transaction, and then there's a second transaction that sort of distributes it. So put some funds into the channel, so you can do uh, or A is A. I think in this particular one. A funds the channel, and sort of, uh, it's, so it's unidirectional. Um, 
So basically, A pays B uh, some small amount and then updates, uh, updates continuously. And the way it works is that uh, the uh, you know after after you know A keeps paying B um, if A tries to publish a transaction that's uh, you know before that's not the latest one B can just sort of take the whole thing which is uh, take take the entire uh, the amount in the channel which is uh, what this is all about the only thing about a Spillman model is um, there's malleability risk uh, and this. Uh, basically, the counterpart, like if you can malleate the funding transaction, uh, then the depositor's funds can be held hostage by the other party um, because you, you always put it into like a two of two multisig. Uh, then they came up with another one. Uh, well, this this was made possible by CLTB. That stands for Check Lock Time Verify. It's a new op code that was introduced. In December, it says December, so somebody can go and change that. December 2015 with BIP65, use uh, check lock time verify um, to take to make it a little more resistant to the malleability problem. Another one is the Poon Dreja payment channels. Um, it's named after Joseph Poon and Taj Dreja, who uh, who are a lightning paper. Um, but basically, it's uh, uh, it's bidirectional. It's uh, it's not it's not unidirectional. It can't be just A paying B. B can also pay back A, and you can instruction such that if somebody tries something mid state, then you can just take all of the funds. So there there's very little incentive to cheat. But basically, uh, this is a two of two multi sig. Uh, but before the transac funding transaction is even signed. Commitment transactions for each party are first written and signed. So it it, it does have some malleability risk. Uh, this is what SegWit fixes. Um, the nice thing about these channels is that you can close it unilaterally. So if either side decides to close it uh, without the permission of the other, then you can do that. But it requires uh, you to like wait for the time lock to expire. And this is the this is you know one of one of the sort of of using closing it bilaterally. So if both people agree, then you can uh, you know you get the funds right away. Whereas if you close it unilaterally, you just you have to wait until the time lock is done. And this is this is enabled by CLTB or um, or check uh, check sequence verify or check lock time verify. Um, and uh, and the Lightning Bolt specification uses the Poon Dry Jug payment channels. Um, there's another payment channel which I don't know that much about. Uh, this is by Christian Decker and Roger Wattenhofer. Um, this type of payment channel requires BIP68. Uh, so this uses um, uh, some something else. I think I, I forget what the BIP68 meaning event sequence is, but it's it's another type of payment channel. But all all of these types of payment channels essentially a they have uh, some set of transactions, and you net out on the chain. That means you need sort of like a direct connection to the other node. Um, in normal Bitcoin transactions, you don't need a direct connection. You just need the address. So um, with payment channels, you need to be connected to a network. And that that's sort of difference. Um, yeah, coming back to me here. Uh, and and you know the, it, it it is sort of like a different security model because uh, you know you you're having somebody sort of directly connect to you, um, and this is one of the things that Lightning wallets have to solve is how do you directly connect to another node and op uh, keep this channel open? How do you communicate them with them? And you don't want the other um, party to sort of send the transaction over. Uh, channel because that might get published and things like that. So there, there's a lot of a uh, lot of different things that you have to think about with respect to Lightning, and this is one of the reasons why Lightning Network protocol development is is not simple. Uh, you 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 have you have sort of a different to account for. You have a different attack surface and things like that, and these these are things that have to get worked out. And a lot of people are like, hey, but why can't we get Lightning right now? Well, I mean, because you, you, you have to let this stuff sort of evolve a little bit slowly. And they, uh, they have specifically as a 
thing uh, where you, uh, you can only fund uh, lightning channels with a, a small amount of Bitcoin because they, they, they want to make sure that like nobody loses a ton of Bitcoin utilizing it this way. Anyway, um, hopefully this gives you sort of an idea of, uh, of what payment channels are. I can, I can sort of build on this and you know, go on to lightning and what lightning means and things like that. Um, all right, uh, any comment on sidechains versus lightning network and Paul Sork versus Peter Taji? I haven't read the tweets. I did see them go by my feed, um, but I, I haven't looked into it very carefully, so I have no comment. Um, <clears throat> do I have to first to a lightning load to open a channel? Um, you have to do what's called a funding transaction, and that's what uh, Spillman style and Poon Dryja payment channels they they need to say, okay, here's the transaction ID that. channel would not work. So this, this is why SegWit is so important. But yeah, uh, having, having malleability sort of, uh, you know, diff, uh, like in a, in a SegWit uh, uh, input transaction, that, that will work for Lightning. That's, that's a key part. All right, um, yeah, so. Gosh, people are saying that my my uh, my thing is not well. I'll I'll redo this, and if I if I uh, have to do something else, then um, you know I might have to re-record this. I, I tried doing this stuff live, but sometimes it it just doesn't work. Anyway, um, for everything, um, I I will either re-record this or release it. I'll I'll, I'll go and take a look. Uh, but anyway, this this song is.